What's going on, bull runners? Welcome back to the channel. So we're out here in Dubai again for another action-packed day of events. So we're gonna be going around town, checking out the sites, going into meetings, and also we have some breaking crypto news to bring to you in this video. We're talking about XRP. We're talking about some other big things happening that you do not want to miss. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed, if you're feeling bullish. And guys, listen, if you haven't taken your putter yet and taking that like button and just giving it a tibbity tap a to sink the putt, then we're never going to beat the SEC. You're never going to buy grandma's house back with XRP. So do that right now. Subscribe to the channel because we're going long, happy. Let's run it. What's going on, bull runners? Welcome back to the channel. So today's been very action packed in and out of meetings. Also, I got a chance to go to the Burj Khalifa. It's absolutely massive. The elevator took less than about a minute to get to the top. But once I got up there, the view is incredible. The vibes are immaculate. And in this video, I got a lot to talk about with you guys of what's happening. I got some exciting news. So hang tight because right now, uh, DC FinTech week just ended. You know, at the same time that the Ripple Swell event did out here in Dubai. And that's no coincidence. I think the SEC clearly lost on everything that matters. Uh, there is a remedy process which continues forward. There's the unknown. And I know Chair Gensler is on stage later. You should ask him if they're going to appeal. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> Not only has the Dubai Financial Services Authority approved XRP for financial services just days before the Ripple Swell conference out here, but Dubai is the first jurisdiction in the world to fully regulate and approve XRP for all financial transactions and services, guys. This is insane. Even though the price of XRP, you don't see it going crazy yet. Listen to this, okay? You're gonna to wanna to watch this video all the way through. Ripple Labs just launched their Ripple payments to expand their crypto liquidity options and HSBC Holdings is launching a digital asset custody service for its institutional clients, tokenizing physical gold. Now, here's why this matters for crypto. HSBC will work with Medico for its storage needs and according to a statement, HSBC expects the new service to go live in 2024. And this is a massive deal because Ripple, the company behind XRP, acquired Medico for $250, not $250, $250 million in May of this summer. And HSBC is the largest Europe-based bank by total assets working with Medico. They currently store about 910 tons of gold for GLD in London and around a quarter of the gold held for ETFs globally. This is massive. So in 2021, HSBC had about $10.8 trillion in assets under custody, and they already have a digital asset issuing platform called HSBC Orion. So the platform, what it does is it issues tokenized gold, uh, the physical version it holds in its London vault, and the latest custody service will complement its Orion platform. And after spending years in years, testing distributed ledger technology, HSBC is the latest financial institution to commercialize blockchain-based applications. And additionally, HSBC follows on the heels of JP Morgan Chase, the largest bank in America, to debut its first collateral settlement using blockchain last month, guys. So pay attention to this because what's happening right now with JP Morgan, they have plans to go live with ISO 20022 on day one. They're not gonna wait until 2025. And I told you guys this on this channel, I've been preparing you guys for this. I say, watch, the banks want market share. So there's gonna be banks that are gonna get the front run, they're gonna go first, and they're gonna do a, what's called a stall tactic, or they're gonna put something out there in the news saying, hey, yeah, 2025, we're going live. And then behind the scenes, they're planning on going early, right? They're jumping the gun. This month, November 19th, get ready for it. A live event they're, they're hosting. So could it be big? Absolutely. Could it be a flop? Absolutely. We're just going to have to wait and see. Um, ISO 20022 priority. So no one has said not all that important. So that's good. Certainly lots of folks are focusing on this. It looks like it's of high importance um, across. I know uh, the November 2023 date is, is what um, everyone has been marching to. So that's good. It looks like it's very high on the priority list. Now, keep in mind, JP Morgan is the largest bank in the U.S. And as everything begins to shift from west over to east, powerful companies over in Dubai, in China, in the Middle East, they're positioning themselves, and you should too, by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and taking the putter, 
and tapping it in, okay? If you got a three putt it, you got a three putt it. If you got a four putt it, you got a four putt it, all right? Some of you are good on the driving range, but you gotta work on your, your putt, putting by tapping it in. Give it a tap a -roo. sink the like button, okay? Because the altcoin rally is starting. So I'm gonna explain by the end of this video how to prepare properly so you don't let FOMO, fear of missing out, or fear, uncertainty, and doubt when the markets are crashing kick in so you can make educated decisions. As always, not financial advice. Don't buy, don't sell anything, but a company called FOMOPay is expanding its reach in Hong Kong with a MSO license and offering a payment and remittance service powered by on-demand liquidity. And I know FOMOPay is a funny name considering the market conditions, but FOMOPay is a leading fintech company over in Asia that has partnered with many global brands like Visa, they partner with PayPal, and Alipay as well too. So this shows, you know, the growing demand and adoption of XRP as a bridge currency for cross-border payments, guys. So according to Lynette Zhang uh, on the Black Swan Capitalist Show, she explained that the Bank for International Settlements has their money flower is what it's called, that is a tool or mechanism to accelerate early adoption of XRP and XLM. And when Rosie Rios, the former treasurer of the United States, she said that the train has already left the station. This is what she was hinting at. The Bank for International Settlements publishes their money flower. And there is a small space in that money flower for those private cryptocurrencies. So I agree with you that the winners of this have already been chosen. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Right. And, it, and I think that you just named the two that are most likely that. And I think also Wall Street's totally adopted Bitcoin. So just recently, they changed the money flower by removing the private crypto area and they added a utility settlement coin on the picture. And on BIS.org, it says the utility settlement coin is an attempt by the private sector to provide a wholesale cryptocurrency. So it's a concept proposed by a collection of large private banks and a fintech firm for a series of digital tokens representing money from multiple countries that could be exchanged on a distributed ledger platform. Could it be that they're talking about Ripple and XRP, where the value of each country's uh, USC on the distributed ledger would be backed by an equivalent value of domestic currency held in a segregated reserve account at the central bank? And last year, you know, Simon Hunt shared some information with us from the World Gold Council, where the vision of the new currency backed by 20 plus you know, odd commodities, give or take a few here and there, including gold. And at the heart of this transformation, XRP will be the key to bridge the old world and the new one. Within three years, and possibly sooner rather than later, that the new world will start operating their new currency, which is linked to 20 odd commodities, but those commodities are not priced in dollars. They are valued in grams of gold. I think it is very likely from my chats in this part of the world that it won't be long before oil is sold not in dollars but in some other currency and this is important because the largest payment processor in africa is on RippleNet. so by switching over to use xrp the savings you know on the swift fees alone is going to be five billion dollars annually and that's not counting the banking fees as well too to have to go through nostro vostro accounts and multiple intermediaries so africa will be united under one real-time network and africa has about 40 percent of the world's gold the largest reserve of cobalt diamonds platinum uranium in the world and 10 percent of the planet's internal renewable fresh water source and up to 90 percent of its chromium and platinum so it's no wonder why you know the BRICS nations include south africa along with brazil russia india and china in its alliance to take down western hedge money so they're preparing for the new commodity backed blockchain financial system not only is the cbdc's going to be coming to the space you know the bis came out with a report said with the real cbdc 
please stand up. And so what Ripple's doing is they're partnering with central banks to be the main company to facilitate those CBDCs. And during the collapse of Rome, they gave what they did during that time period, guys, when they were debauching the currency, you know, bad money was coming out. So it forced good money into hiding. That's why, you know, all the countries were accumulating more gold and precious metals than ever before. Whereas like their currency was being, the coins were being clipped and then they started to come out with fake money. Well, what happened was they were giving everyone a circus and alcohol daily. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. God bless you. So they were giving everyone a circus and an alcohol daily. Why did they do that? Why were they giving to everyone like the Coliseum, you know, showing them the gladiators fighting and all that stuff like modern day gladiator stuff is the UFC. So they're doing the same thing in today's day and age. It just looks a little different because we're not wearing our, you know, our, our, our loincloths like we did back in caveman days or we're not wearing our, our togas in today's day and age, right? Well, the collapse of the empire was what was happening. They didn't want people focusing on the collapse of the empire because they knew even if they knew they wouldn't care because they were drunk and entertained. And so that's what's happening right now in the nation. And I'm American, you know, I believe in freedom. I believe in this country, but in order to be free, we have to purchase our freedom. I've said this so many times, and I know you understand this. I don't have to insult your intelligence here. You're a full grown educated degenerate, as I always say, crypto degenerate, just like the rest of us. But as human beings, we have to purchase our freedom. We are the only species that has to pay money to live on this planet. Every single other species gets to live for free. So what we are doing is we are backing up our trucks all the way to the bank. We're grabbing the bags, we're packing them and stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe that the spending power of the dollar is gonna to continue to go down in value. That's a fact based on inflation. Blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, and cryptocurrencies are going up in interest. Right now, the markets are going crazy, guys. And together, you know where we're going. We're going camping on the beaches of the moon. We predicted this, we forecasted this, we've been prepared for this and you're gonna be prepared too. So I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com. You guys can get on our list to be notified first when we launch our financial education platform. It's free to get on our list, free to get in our Telegram group, and we're putting together an altcoin list. Doesn't mean you guys should buy these projects. It's just what I'm personally investing in. In fact, don't buy anything, don't sell anything. Watch this video for educational purposes only. You know, a lot of people, they'll watch the video, they'll get excited because it's just, how can you not when you see news like this popping out there and then they go and they dump all their life savings from selling their house into a project. Never do that, ever. Never, ever do that. You know, even if, you know, you're feeling risky and you're feeling bullish, right? Don't do that, okay? Don't buy anything. Go get a job at McDonald's and do that, okay? That's the key to financial freedom. No hate to anyone who works at McDonald's, man. I, I know, hey, I used to scrub dishes at the hospital, so I can, I can hate on it, okay? I can hate on minimum wage because I used to make $7.25 an hour, all right? so. If you're not where you want to be, then you know what to do. Go to bullrunners.com. I'll see you guys on the next video. I will see you on the beaches of the moon. As always, stay bullish.